Aw, oh, Ragnarok. Double Boy's mega collab that took more than three years to finish. Considering it was hosted by him, of course the community has absolutely adored the level, even if it wasn't worth the hype. However, I'm not here to talk about the level as a whole. Instead, I'm going to be ranking every individual part and giving my opinion on them. Before I start, I'd like to give a quick disclaimer. I will only be talking about the visual aspects that each part has to offer. And obviously, this is only my opinion, so you probably won't agree with me, and that's alright. After all, that's what makes it an opinion. So with all of that out of the way, let's begin. The worst part in the level, in my opinion, is Toby's part. The colors don't work at all and the designs aren't good. Everything is hard to see except for the ground spikes, probably due to the poor usage of glow. And speaking of the ground spikes, they're the most visible part, yet they're also the emptiest part. It's a shame that one of the drop hearts is the worst one. In his defense, however, that gameplay looks awful to decorate. Garrow's part is just forgettable. In fact, I completely forgot to write the script for his part until I was almost done editing the video. This part feels very static and dull. There's too much air decoration which makes it very messy. The colors aren't very good, and using yellow is a terrible idea, of course. Overall, this part is just bad. Rustam's part is just too messy. The idea where the background pulses to black is admittedly pretty cool. The execution, however, isn't, and it makes the part look emptier yet messy at the same time. This part feels static due to the lack of moves, and the bad block design doesn't help. The combination of the pulses and the art does help add to the eerie atmosphere, though. Zaro's part kind of reminds me of Toby's part, but better. There's a bit of copy-paste that makes it look a bit repetitive and lazy, and the blocks could be much better. He added a few moves, but nowhere near enough for my liking. The part is much more fast-paced, so it's more lively than, for example, Rustam's part. And just like Toby's part, the gameplay looks hard to decorate. On its own, G's part is pretty good, even though it's not very well made. The thing that really makes it worse is that the entire level is monochromatic, except for this one part. Making a color scheme like this one is pretty hard, but he definitely could have done a better job. Some of the gameplay objects have a low opacity, which looks really bad in my opinion. Once again, it isn't very bad, but it doesn't fit with the rest of the level at all. If you want to make a good mega collab, or level in general, you need to make sure there's consistency. Oh boy, and Lex just had to make a part in this, didn't he? Things about his style that I don't like the most are the colors moved and his trademark spikes. The colors are too desaturated and there's no hue changes. As small as it seems, just a subtle hue change can really improve something. This may seem like a weird complaint, but the moves aren't evenly spread out enough. There are moments when a bunch of blocks move that are just followed by a couple seconds of none. That m might just be me, though. The moves also seem a bit too fast for me. Despite all of that, it's still a pretty decent part. So before we continue, I would just like to say that it was very hard to rank the following parts. All of them are really close in quality, except for number one, which was definitely the best. Well. Only in my opinion, of course. Binox's part was probably the hardest part to rank. The colors are okay, and the moves are kind of bad. They're too fast in my opinion, and they're pretty much all the same. By that, I mean that every single block moved the same way, which is toward the center. It could be executed much better, and I think they were too fast. At least it even has moves, though. It definitely isn't a bad part at all. I bet you're all surprised to see Novel Boy this low. I was going to rank him as high as number two, 
but when I looked at his part again, I just realized how mediocre it is. I feel like it has a bunch of potential though. The colors are a bit too desaturated for my liking, and it feels too static, other than for the unique gameplay parts. The curved dash orbs are kind of cool, but the thing that really stands out to me is the wave. It's interesting to see a curved wave, and the visuals in that section are also the best of the entire part. As cool as the wave is, the part overall is just disappointing, even if it's unique. Zephyrox's part is simply too messy. That's the main issue for me at least. It could also use some cue changes and moves, but if some details and glow were removed, this part would probably look a lot better. It's very decent, however, and especially the second half, which is much cleaner. It's important to have a strong start in a level, and for me, Pan Man's part does a pretty good job. Along with the art, it helps establish the theme very nicely. It has a lot of elements that are used later on in the level, such as the gameplay elements that are pulsed black in the art. The blocks are a bit too simple and empty for me, but they're still okay. It could use some moves, but overall this part is pretty well made. The quality of Platinum's part really surprised me. I usually don't like his style, but this time he did a really good job. The wave was empty, but the first sections really carried it for me. It was a little bit messy, and could use some moves, and despite that, this part was great. The effect where the glow faded could have been done much better though. The eyes and the ground spikes added a lot to the atmosphere, but the last sections were empty there. The colors were pretty good, even though I usually hate the type of colors that are used in it. Overall, I really like this part, even if I don't know why. I like THO4 stuff a lot, and this part is no exception. This is nowhere near as good as some of his other works, but it's still really nice. I was surprised to see that there are no moves at all, because it feels very lively, probably because of the fast-paced gameplay. The ground spikes were pretty empty though, however, this part was great as always from him. And the best part of Ragnarok, in my opinion, is Darwin's. Despite the fact that it's slow and monochromatic, it feels very lively due to the moves and constant color changes. The effect where the blocks pulse on their own is very well done. The blocks fit perfectly with the rest of the part. However, I'm not a huge fan of the occasional big saws that have a white glow around them. I really like this part though, so great job to him, as that is no easy task. So, in conclusion, Ragnarok is a pretty decent level, but somewhat disappointing considering it was hosted by Nava Boy. This is one of the better extreme demons in my opinion, but the majority of them aren't good, at least according to my high standards. Once again, this is my opinion and only my opinion, so don't get mad in the comments or dislike the video just because you disagree. Instead, be civil and tell me your opinions on the level, I'd like to hear them. And of course, thanks for watching. I appreciate every single one of you.